wasn't anything that felt negative. It was more playful. I mentioned it to my friend, um, and it turns out that I guess his uncle or someone in the house has that the the guman. Hi, my name's Art. My name is Raihan. My name is Wade, and my name is Kyle. And this is Tales from Incredible Tales. Together with some very special guests, we're taking a look back at Incredible Tales, a horror anthology that aired on Channel Five from 2004 to 2017. We will also ask our guests to share their scary stories. This episode, we're once again joined by Art the host of Incredible Tales throughout its 13 years. Hi, Art. Hi, Art. Hi guys. <laughs> so looking forward to this episode. Ooh. Yeah, yeah so many stories. Yeah. Ooh, so many yes. Stories. So in every episode of Tales from Incredible Tales, we will explore a different theme and how it ties to the classic Incredible Tales episodes. For this episode, we're looking at strange things that happen while you're on a retreat or at a hotel or even just enjoying some quiet time off the beaten path. This episode's theme was inspired by Possessed from Season 1, An Old Hotel and No Picnic from Season 2. Possessed follows a group of teenagers working at a restaurant. They all stay over at a chalet, but little did they know that the chalet already has an occupant whom they can't see. Soon after they step foot into the chalet, it possesses one of them and wreaks havoc. In Old Hotel, a young chambermaid gets a job in one of the oldest hotels in Singapore. As she dutifully goes about her job through the corridors of the hotel, she finds that the hotel holds a terrible secret behind its creaking doors. Always creaking doors. And in No Picnic, a young couple goes on a picnic in a remote part of Chuachukang. While the boyfriend is preoccupied with setting up the picnic, the girl encounters something that changes her and ultimately terrorizes her boyfriend. Let's take a look. That's intense. I know, right? <laughs> very intense. I feel like we're in the movie theater. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm quite sure I saw you jump. I did. You did, right? I did. Which part, which part? <laughs> when the door closed. <laughs> I just like, <sighs> a couple of times there. So Art, um, how did things change for you when, you know, Incredible Tales went to season two? I think it was a natural progression when we went into two. I think once we got into the later seasons, that's when I realized how powerful our stories were becoming mm. and connecting with people. But going to season two, um, it was still an extension of me being fairly new to Singapore. Mm. I continue to like learn more through the stories, but it's a bit different because as I'm here longer, I'm more... Um, more comfortable. Mm. But uh, it's kind of like when you're wide-eyed and you have no idea of this new culture or new place that you're coming into. And I have to agree because the second season has even more intensified scenes. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, more jump scares. Yeah. 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 I think the second season, they t show a little bit more of the spirits. Yeah. 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 You see a little bit more of the spirits. La. Yeah. yeah. What was like the, the gap between shooting for season one and season two? Was there... Then mm. jump straight into it. Sometimes, like we would have like a year or two before another season, mm. but like the first couple of seasons were sort of back to back. But what I found interesting is um, basically when you think about these stories, you would think of the scenario and situations being mm. at night. Mm. So it was so seeing these stories told where it's like in broad daylight yeah. gives a whole different context to it. Mm. Oh, that's true. Even the yeah. chalet was like during the day. Yeah. Because you would least expect anything to happen oh, yeah. in broad daylight. Like yeah. that, that last bit where the guy walks away from, from the door and then you just see the lady standing there in this last clip. That's like, mm. it's, it, it feels like a very 
<laughs> I, oh, hold, no, it's not gonna work, man. It's not. <laughs> Again, I had a hard job. <laughs> he, he thought it was real. <laughs> exactly. I mean, whenever I. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Look, you're an actor. This, you do this for a living. You can't do this though. It's a little too convincing sometimes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The stories here, which are possessed and whole old hotel, they deal with ghosts from Singapore's history, from the time of colonialism to the Japanese occupation. So in your experience, what are some of the places where you think the echoes of our past are still a little louder? I think everything you just mentioned right there, mm. those echo a lot louder because they're more rooted in history. We only get a taste or hear stories, but we don't know what actually happened. Yes. So what actually happened could be so much more darker and further than what we we know. Mm. I wanted to ask, like, were you on set for shooting the links? Because I remember like some of the links for this episode shown were you were in like the forested area. Mm. Yeah. How was it like? The forest areas, um, as in all areas, um, I keep on like mention- saying this, is you have to just kind of go into it respecting the space that you're going into. For me, it's always a bit different shooting at night versus during the day. Mm. I feel at night there's more energies mm. That, mm. that are around. But I would be really interested to get like... Um, accounts from the actors because like as we're revisiting these uh, stories it's interesting to see the actors and mm. some of the actors are very good yeah. and um, to find out if they had any experience because we're talking about the crew right mm. but mm. you also have the actors as well yeah yeah, yeah definitely I, I, yeah I think it would be quite nice to actually at, at some point revisit some of these episodes with that the cast and the crew as well. Exactly, because you never know what might happen to them, right? Yeah. Especially when they are acting out that particular scene. Mm. Which speaks of, speaking of which, you know, because in both Possess and No Picnic, a spirit sticks over one character. Mm. So what do you think makes a person susceptible to possession? Or is it like a particular type of person that is, will always get it? Or is it just a wrong time, wrong place kind of situation? Well, I'm not um, an expert in giving like a, formal answer to that, mm. but I can only give an answer from like my own personal experience or like my thoughts on it, is I feel certain people have um, are more attuned. I think it has to do with your energies at a certain time, whether you're in a place of, I think people who are more depressed or maybe like going through certain situations, their energies are lower. So they're more susceptible to energies that might come in. So um, if you're not in the right place in terms of like your feelings and stuff, I do feel that energies can come in a way to take over you in a way. Mm. To the uh, to the point of possession, I don't know. It could. Yeah, I've I've seen I've seen uh, real life possession before. Ooh. It's it's really weird. Yeah. So so basically, I I saw one of my uh, oldest friends that I trust the most uh, just flip the switch just like that. Wow. <clears throat> yeah. Um. I had um a nun in Thailand who explained deities and, and spirits. And when deities uh, possess you, it's different. It's a different energy versus like uh, a negative mm. spirit taking possession over you. I think it's a lot has to do with like, um, cause it's a whole different territory. Mm-hmm. And it's like, a, when going back to your question about, you know, um, how people who are more susceptible, I think it's more like a radio frequency mm. when you turn onto a radio station. Mm. So you just happen to have that particular signal that kind of tunes in with their signal. Mm. So that's why certain people are more susceptible to like seeing things and, mm. and cert- certain people don't. Yeah, it's just more of that wave, the radio le- um, wavelength. So, so yeah, it, it goes with the, the whole stereotype of like, don't drink. I don't drink uh, because you it's easier for you to get possessed. If you're seeing it or you sense, but then the, the level of being possessed mm. or seeing a possession, it's just, it's a whole different level. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's like an intrusion, a, a greater intrusion into your life because mm. it's somebody you know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So in my culture, we believe that possession can happen in two cases. One, it could be a work of somebody else. Mm. It could be like somebody else oh, yeah. sent off something to you, possess you because, you know, hatred or something. It could also be due to you, you know, sometimes we still have this this, uh, issue where people 
adopt spirits. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Right, right. So um, they adopt spirits for their own use. Mm. And then they don't feed the spirits well. The spirits eat them back. Yeah. Mm. It's black magic. Yeah. It exists in Thailand as well. Yeah. Where um, if you dabble into black magic with voodoo or... But the thing about black magic is you have to be very careful how, um, how you play because mm. it, it will go back two, three times folds. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've had an experience where my sister saw one. And oh she, she sees things, you see. So she saw one and it was in our house. Back oh then, God. Um, when it entered. So I saw something like a figure just pass by me while I was in the living room and go straight to my sister's room. Mm. And then my si- younger sister went inside her room and the next thing she's wheeling out. She wasn't possessed, but she keep on pointing to that corner of the wall. And she keep on crying and crying, crying and crying. And we tried to, you know, console her, say some prayers, but I can feel such an energy in that room. Mm. It was like one of those uh, moments where I, I I totally believe that yeah this thing exists yeah. really so I I guess when experiences hit you that's when you just change you become a believer yeah yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's hard to to be a non believer after you see enough stuff. yeah in Thailand um ghosts uh, children grow spirits they call mm-hmm. guman so I think earlier in my uh, time in Thailand um, I had stayed over at my friend's house. And I, I think I went for a nap. There was like a lot of people over. I woke up with, I woke up with kids in the room, but I didn't see kids. Oh. And I hear, I heard laughter. Mm. And I actually, I can hear like, I can hear running around. Mm. So, I thought I was dreaming at first. Yeah. And it was kind of a different experience for me because, uh, it wasn't anything that felt like negative, it was more playful. Mm -hmm. And then I mentioned it to my friend um, and it turns out that I guess his uncle or someone in the house has that, Mm. you know. um, Wantong. Yeah, the the guman, where they they would have this altar just for the children's ghosts, where they give them like, you know, candy and Mm. like milk and and stuff like that to sort of, protect the house. Mm. So that was my first experience in that, in that respect, having an experience that was like more light, but it was still pretty strange for me. Yeah. yeah, Cause oh. it's not normal. Yeah. yeah essentially praying to a, 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 a spirit of a child that's deceased. Mm. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Speaking of spirits um, in many places, we know that um, as we travel, definitely there will be spirits anywhere. Have you experienced any strange things that happens to you when you're traveling? I have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot that I'll be sharing. You look look at this side, right? This side is yeah, a yeah. lot. Yeah. No, I was looking at you. I think they do. <laughs> I, I looked at you. I was like, oh, this is whether I'm gonna share it in this episode. Or <laughs> teasing, teasing. No, I, actually, I'm 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 quite curious for Win. Yeah. Um. Nothing overt. Okay. It's just it's it's one of those things where it's just that feeling. Okay. I, I don't know whether it's just because you're an unfamiliar environment. Yeah. But for one thing, I didn't know about the superstition that you're supposed to knock on the door before you go. Oh, uh, yeah. I had no idea about that. So I used to continuously just walk into the hotel room. I was like, ah, oh, it's fine. Um, the worst is always that sense when you're alone in the hotel room mm. and you feel like you're being watched. Mm. That, I, that I've experienced quite a bit. Mm. And in many different countries. It's not just, it's not just like, oh, in the region you feel that way, but like mm. there was a, I, I stayed in a very old bed and breakfast in London and I love that place, but every time I fall asleep down there, it's just, you get the sense that somebody is watching you. So yeah, that thankfully nothing overt, but always just. Mm. Speaking of the knocking door, mm. do you guys practice it? Do you knock the hotel room door? I don't. You don't. I do it on planes. Oh really? Oh yeah. Oh, why? But it has, it's not related to spirits. Oh. oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but but you do? Do you do it now? Oh, now I now do. now you do it. Do, yeah. Do um, it? Mine would not be knocking the door. Mine would be opening the door, say a prayer, and then ah. go inside and say another prayer, and say more prayers ah. <laughs> while inside. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. It's similar, lah. Yeah, it's yeah. almost like similar. saying, uh, uh, "Hello, I come in peace." Yeah, yeah. Don't that's right. Me. Don't disturb me. I, I want to have. You. Okay, okay. Yes, okay. because what happened was before that, mm. I didn't do it. 
Mm. And those things happened. Mm. Uh, it was on my honeymoon, if I, I believe. Ooh. And we were right at the back uh, near the beach. Mm. I don't think it's a good idea to be there. And uh, <laughs> that night when I was sleeping, I had a nightmare. I, I, it was in my vision where I had somebody standing right beside me on my bed. He was looking down at me. Oh God. While sleeping, I was looking down. So I, I, I had, my wife woke me up and I realized that, oh yeah, it was just a dream. But spirits can also disturb you in dreams. It was like, no, I was inside my body, but I was looking up to the spirit that was looking down oh towards me. Oh my God. Yeah. And I can, I can imagine, I can still vision it. Like he's yeah. wearing white with, with black hair, but when I open he, my eyes, yeah. it's not that. It's a he. Oh. So, yeah. Somehow Maybe. that seemed to frighten you even more. Yeah. You? Yeah. Because <laughs> it's not normal. Uh. Good. Yeah, you know, it's not. Mm. <laughs> what you're talking about. No, what's, in, what's interesting is because like for me and Kyle, it's quite normal if we come up with, you know, we have stories. Yeah. But with Raihan, it's like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. it's, on your honeymoon. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've had cases. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty creepy. It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty yeah. creepy. So that day I had to say a prayer and we were very conscious about what we do and where where we go because we mm. don't want any spirits to follow us home. So, so I, I also travel, used to travel extensively for work. Uh, there was one project that took me around Southeast Asia. So by that point, I've seen it all. Like, wow. Because when you're doing production, you, you're you usually trying to save money, especially when you're the crew, mm. right? So you you stay in really weird, like creepy hotels, pretty pretty dingy. Um, then I stayed in a particular hotel in Myanmar. Oh my God. I was supposed to stay two more days just to sightsee myself. That was uh, maybe a couple of years back. And I left early because I felt that hotel was super dirty. I can oh. feel it to my bone. Mm. So um, I it's a hotel right uh, like next to a jungle. Um, and it's like quite out of the city center. But uh, uh, my clients, because you know clients, they are very important. So we gave them rooms with uh, windows. My room didn't have any window. Mm. Like okay. it was straight up pitch black. Even in the day, oh, if you didn't on the lights. So I I went into the, the lift. The lift uh, had like the garlands, the flowers. Oh. So it's like, it has a very strong chrysanthemum smell. Then I went out with the with the concierge. He opened the room for me. Before he opened it, he knocked. That's when you know like, hey, this is like a universal thing for saying, or oh, maybe this room got something. <laughs> he opened. The price is like dirt cheap. So I was like, wait a minute. There's no, there's no window. And th there's like four beds. Oh, wow. I'm one person. And there's like a kitchen and there's like a big uh, bathroom. I was oh, like, this is yourself. way too big for me. It's insane. And I didn't have windows, ma. No, actually the guy was like, sir. <laughs> he knocked the door open, eh? sir. <laughs> That's like, no, you're going first. <laughs> then he go in, <laughs> he put in a key on the light. Then I walked in, I took two steps in. I, I smell, I smelled something very funky, like very wet. Like oh. damn smell. I didn't like the smell. I also didn't like the vibes. I just, I just, basically, I just told him, uh, got what weird smell. Ah. Then he said, okay. Then he okay. Just, we both walk out. Then he went to change the room. Then the second room was similar, but smaller, but it wasn't any better. It still felt weird. The weird vibes is strong. And the, the layout of the hotel is very weird. So the lift is right in the middle of the hotel. So when you take the lift up, then there's like a, a four crossroads. So you can go either way. So my clients took the this way that is facing, uh, there's the rooms with the windows that's facing the main road, which is quite okay. I took the room which was behind the lift. That's why it's pure darkness. And then I asked, can I change my room? And then they were like, oh, you want to change your room? Uh? 50 USD per night. I was like, hell no, I'm not going to pay like 200 USD just to stay in a room with windows. Oh wow. Yeah, so I was very wrong. I was very, very wrong. I, I, that whole night I couldn't sleep. I kept having like vibes, like people staring at me. Mm. But luckily I, I knew some feng shui techniques to change the, I, I, I shift around the, the beds and stuff to make it in a way by the net, the energy wasn't so bad. But it felt really bad to the point where I didn't sleep for about close to two days. Wow. And I was shooting, I was shooting the program while I'm doing that. Then um, it affected my work. So I couldn't even stay on. Cause when, once it read, right, my client would go back to Singapore and then it will change another set of clients. But I was the, the the lead director for the whole shoot. So I had to stay on for the program. So I was like, I can't do this. I can't. I think if I stay two more days, come home, we'll see the ghost one. 
Wow. Because the ghost, you, you can feel like the tension is building up already. So I was like, no, no, no. I straight away, I booked the flight. I went back home. I went back. I went back to Singapore straight. Then I was like, screw the booking. I go back to Singapore. I pay for my own flight. I told my producer, I'll pay for my own flight. I go home. Uh-huh. But to this day, I didn't tell my producer why. Oh. But I just like, I had to get out here. So then my client saw me and I thought, hey, Carl, aren't you staying to this? I know, no, I, I, I miss my family. I need to go home. <laughs> but the fact that you could actually stay there for the next two days... I had to, it's my job. I have no choice. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I, wanted, have... I wanted to go home so bad, like seriously so bad. And I've seen it all. I stayed in a hotel in Brunei. I'm pretty sure the whole stretch, right? It's a very long hallway. It's like from the shining, it's like from the shining kind. And I was the only unit. Yeah, so it's quite empty. Yeah, it's a relatively quiet area of Brunei. So I was the only hotel. And I was fine. I, I didn't feel, I felt creepy, but I didn't feel like that intense. But that one, I, I can feel. Like, that one, oh. that thing wanted to get me. So I faster tell. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure you have a lot of experience. Maybe you want mm. to share one. <laughs> Very vivid um, one. <laughs> well, to segue off of like Kyle, um, I have an experience um, with a producer. Um, we were shooting in Phuket. Mm. But yeah, wow. we had lots of shoots in Phuket, but this is a different producer, a different timeline. Um, I think we had uh, several different crews, one from Taiwan and one from Thailand and Singapore. So we stayed at Club Med, I remember. Mm. I think my producer at the time, like he was trying to scare us one one of the nights we were there like for three days, two nights. And I think at 11 or 12, like I remember it because like I heard like, I heard some, like I had my headphones on, so I was like on on my laptop, but um, I think he went around the different, like um, different rooms and Mm. trying to scare people. So he was throwing like pebbles or rocks or what what not. And I look back and I remember vividly, I heard like, but for me, I didn't think it was spirits. I I just heard noises. Um, And then the next day, I guess we, we all flew, you know, flew back. And then he didn't come to work for the next two days when we came back to Singapore. And uh, my, the stylist, makeup artist was telling me, um, she's like, did you hear, like, you know, he's he's not doing really well. He's like very sick. Like he brought something back with him. And then that's when we kind of connected the fact that um, he came back and he was just very withdrawn, very depressed. And it turned out that um, he had to get a BOMO to um, basically, you know, find out what was going on with him. So he had brought the spirit back with him. Yeah. So what had happened was that because he was just running around um, and probably did not pay respects mm. and you don't, you know, we were, we, we had this talk about how when you go into the forest or you go into certain areas yeah. or you see incense or whatnot, sometimes you might be stepping into certain things or places without knowing that you're actually intruding. So um, the Bomo said that he actually intruded on a spirit that was not happy. And it, it was a woman. Oh. So um, he, he could actually see her. And he said the only way to... Uh, to get rid of her or it's to bring her back and oh. do like a little ritual back in Phuket. So that's what he had to do. There was the producer that was playing pranks. La. Yeah. Oh. And usually I'm the one who's playing <laughs> pranks. But like, you know, I took a day, a night off. And maybe I, cause I know better than to do yeah. pranks. Um, so yeah, it's a producer who was doing pranks. La. And then, yeah, he got pranked at the end. Wow. With, like the spirit going by. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So do you all have any tips to ensure that you guys, uh, you know, travel safely. I would say just bring uh, any religious objects mm. Mm. Uh, that you have, whatever your religion is. Uh, I think it's also to make you feel level. Um, I've ha- I have one. Um, they usually say that if you would like to book a resort or hotel, try to make sure that it's not in between two forests or two jungles. Mm. Because that's where spirit paths mm. across. So, I, I don't know. Before. I've never heard that one before. Yeah. That's no, there's crazy. a lot of rules. Like there's one like um, never book the last room in the right. hallway yeah. right next to the fire seat. That's usually the most haunted one. Oh, is it? Yeah. Like some in some uh, culture, 13th floor is a no-no. Oh, yes. Floor is a no-no. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. In, I think in Taiwan, there's no fourth floor. Oh. Um, in Thailand, all the condominiums, 
they don't have it as 13. Yeah. They have as 12A. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. B. Yeah. I've yeah. noticed. Like for uh, 3A, three, three 3B, M, that kind of thing. Lah. Like they, yeah. they play around. It's still fourth floor, lah, but it's, it, they <laughs> rebrand it as a different <laughs> floor. Mm. Yeah. Right, right. All right. So this is a question for our audience. So what's creepier to you? An old hotel or a resort that's near a jungle or forest? Wow. I feel when things are more older or like, Ener- it's like it it reels in those energies. Mm. Mm. So so you prefer an old hotel? No, I prefer uh, a a new resort in, in the jungle or oh. like a forest versus an old hotel because okay. I think when things are old, it has old energies and it's going to reel in energies. More things, mm. yeah. And they're they're not well stuck there. I guess I guess the energy they're like because it's it's a a foundation a building itself. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's, for me, it's the other way around. I would prefer an old hotel because a ho- old hotel could mean that it's right in the city center and then you mm. can just leave. If anything happens, you can just leave. But if you're in a new resort in the middle of nowhere, oh if you try to leave, like the, the, the forest spirits might get you. Oh God. Right. If you try to, wow. I don't know. Like you try to run away, then you're still you're still you're still surrounded by forests, and the forest forests have even more things, right? So I think it's more of a strategy for me, lah. Mm. I, I agree with art, but I think like uh, if it's a hotel, I can just run out, then I go to another hotel down the road or something. Yeah, I'm thinking we should do a game show together. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so funny. Yeah. Last man standing. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. I have to say, hearing both their answers, now I've decided I'm just not going to go on holiday for a while. <laughs> because, crap, there's no way to win. Um, no, but I, I I, think I'll go with what you were saying as well, where it's an old hotel. That j- it's, there's something so imposing about it. Mm. Even if it's in the middle of a city, the, it's like you were saying, the energy. I And I couldn't put it into words, like what it is about these old buildings that just... They're so imposing, but yeah, it's the energy. It's a very oppressive energy to it. I don't know whether the energies are good or bad. Mostly bad, lah, but okay. yeah, probably. Okay. But <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, new resort in a jungle. Yes. All right. So for myself, because I've had experiences for both, oh, oh, oh hotel and also in the jungle. So this is a very high pick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's hard <laughs> I don't want both but if I would have to go for both uh, either I'll go for a whole, whole hotel uh, oh. um, simply because like while, what Carl says if anything happens you can run out because mm. um, I've been in a f- resort near a jungle in fact just beside a beach where I was touched by a spirit in the room and when I ran out it's the jungle <laughs> so I'm like oh part two guys so I'm not gonna do that <laughs> maybe that was like the, the, the bait like let me touch him then he will run out to the jungle that's where I get him exactly maybe so I'm like okay that is not what I want so maybe the city is much more safer you know mm-hmm. if anything happens I can just run out to another hotel yeah so old hotel for me nice there's no winning in this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you lose, you lose. It's like a horror movie, right? <laughs> That's right. It is that time again, Kyle. Yes. Our one morbid fact of the day. Um, as always, you know, we said it before, this doesn't have to be about ghosts. It could be about anything. But Kyle, what is our one morbid fact of the day? Anyone here scared of clowns? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Are you afraid of clowns? Uh, not really. <sighs> Are you? Yes. You have like, what was that word uh, for clown phobia? Oh God. I know, I'm not it's sure. Like, it's like there's an English word for it. Like, yeah, I, I can't remember what it is. But yeah. The fear of clowns. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I didn't realize I was scared of clowns until I saw Ronald McDonald. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was so scared of him. <laughs> and then recently there was a Halloween party where a little child dressed as clown and I was standing like 10 feet away and I was just staring at him. I was like, no. I, sorry, before we continue, Ronald McDonald. I thought- It can be quite creepy, right? Maybe, but I thought you were going to say like Pennywise from It. Oh, that's- I think that one is like, on, on the incredible scale, right? It's like- <laughs> Oh yeah. Max. That's a 10 X4. plus plus. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I guess you can't go to Nevada. La. Apparently in Nevada, there is a clown theme hotel. You. <laughs> and it's a uh, dubbed America's scariest motel. And then, and, and, and the best part, right next to a cemetery. 
Oh. oh. <laughs> what? Are you serious? Yes. Yeah. Wow, it can't get creepier than that. I know. Yeah. Like some, cl- some dark tourism thing. <laughs> can you imagine if they just got everyone who had that phobia and just threw them into that hotel? <laughs> game show, ah. A game show, yeah. That That's a game show. That's a game show. That, I would watch that. I'd feel so bad for those contestants, <laughs> but I would watch it. Please don't sign me up. <laughs> it's a bit late. You've already told us, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was one more big fact. Thank yeah, you. That, that, that one power, that one. All right. So thank you so much, Art, for joining us again. And thank you to all of you out there for tuning in to Tales from Incredible Tales. New episodes go up every Thursday evening on YouTube and MeWatch and on podcast platforms such as MeListen, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. My name is Art. My name is Wayne. My name is Kyle. My name is Raihan. And we'll see you next time.